This is video number seven of the market structures series in the IB economics high level only microeconomics component. This will be part one of oligopoly as a market structure. So like all the other uh, market structures I have um, explained or discussed, I'm going to start by uh, talking about the assumptions of the model. So what are the assumptions of oligopoly as a market structure? Firstly, we assume that there's a dominance of the industry by a small number of firms. So there's a small number of firms. These firms are very inter Dependent. So they're not completely independent of each other in terms of their pricing and output decisions. Their products could either be homogenous or differentiated. Some oligopolies uh, produce homogenous products. Some oligopolies produce differentiated products. And there are high barriers to entry into the market. Now, the interdependence that we assumed earlier between oligopolistic firms, it creates a dilemma for those firms. Should we compete against each other or should we cooperate or in economics we say collude? So the dilemma is to compete or to collude. Oligopolists face two conflicting incentives. They have an incentive to compete against each other and at the same time they have an incentive to collude, uh, to collude or cooperate. Now, economists use something called concentration ratios to identify oligopolistic markets. Basically, what you, what you look at, so for example, a CR4, so concentration ratio 4, measures the percentage of market share held by the largest four firms in the industry. So a CR4 would look at the total market share uh, of the percentage market share of the largest four firms. A CR8 would measure the percentage market share of out or output held by the largest eight firms in the industry. These concentration ratios are used to identify oligopolistic markets. So um, game theory um, is often used to illustrate the strategic interdependence and the dilemmas that oligopolistic firms face. A very famous example is the prisoner's dilemma. So this is used to illustrate the strategic interdependence between oligopolies and the options of pricing and output decisions and oligopolist faces. So let's assume there are only two firms in the market. There's firm A and firm B. This market is a duopoly. Okay? Uh, firm A has the option of keeping price the same or lowering its price. Firm B has the option of keeping price the same or lowering its price. Now, what are the options? Well, if both firms keep price the same, their profits will be $6 million each. If both firms lower their price, their profit will be $4 million each. Now, if firm A lowers its price while firm B keeps its price the same, firm A will make 8 million in profit and firm B will make 2 million in profit. And the opposite is true. If firm A keeps its price but firm B lowers its price, firm A will make a profit of 2 million, firm B will make a profit of 8 million. So each decision whether to keep price the same or to lower the price will, so pricing and output decisions will almost um, will be affected by your competitors' decisions or your competitors' choices. So here there's a dilemma. Obviously, uh, the best case scenario is for firm A to, to lower its price. So the best case scenario for firm A is for firm A to lower its price while firm B keeps its price. But that's very unlikely because if firm A lowers its price, firm B will most probably respond by lowering its price as well, and then they both make $4 million in profit. So it is a dilemma. Um, game theory is used uh, to sort of explain the pricing and output decisions that an oligopolist faces. Now, oligopolies, uh, there are two main types. There are collusive oligopolies, when the oligopolistic firms come together and they collude, they cooperate or non-collusive oligopolies. Non-collusive oligopolies I will cover in the next video in this series. So watch out for part two of oligopolies. Now, collusive oligopolies. There are two types of collusion. There's open formal collusion.
collusion and there's tacit or informal collusion. Let's explain both and see how they make their pricing and output decisions. So um, let's just start by defining collusion. Collusion in oligopoly refers to an agreement between firms to limit competition, increase monopoly power, and increase profits. We said there are two types of collusive oligopoly. We have open and formal collusion and tacit informal collusion. What's open and formal collusion? So open collusion or formal collusion, you can call it either. Open formal collusion is known as a car. Tell. So cartel is the word that we use to describe open formal collusion. It takes place when the firms openly agree on the price that they will all charge or, or on the market share or on the market expenditure. So they agree on either the price that they will all charge or they agree on they divide, they split the market between them or they agree on how much they will spend on marketing and advertising. This is known as a cartel. The primary goal of a cartel is to limit competition between members, and to maximize joint profits. So the firms together, they work as if they were collectively a monopoly. Collusive oligopoly is actually illegal in most countries because it's usually against the interests of consumers. However, it may occur between governments, and a very good example is the OPEC, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. Um, all the oil exporting countries come together to set production quotas and prices for world oil markets. And the, the, the leading producer in this um, government sort of cartel is Saudi Arabia as the largest uh, producer. So this is open or formal collusion. It is an open agreement on price or, or on market share or marketing expenditure. Together, they agree to limit competition and together they maximize joint profits as if they are a monopoly. What about tacit or informal collusion? So this exists when firms in an oligopoly charge the same prices without any open or formal agreement, especially because formal collusion is illegal in most countries. So basically a firm may charge the same price as another by just looking at the prices of a dominant firm in the industry. This is called price leadership. So the firms kind of look to the dominant firm in the industry and try to charge the same prices or charge the prices of the main competitors. It's not necessary for them to communicate to be able to do that um, and therefore uh, they kind of protect themselves from any uh, government response or any government accusation of being um, an, op uh, 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 an open collusion or informal collusion which as I said is illegal in most countries. Now, whether it's formal or tacit collusion, in both formal and tacit collusion, the process is the same. The firms behave like a monopolist, a single producer. They charge the monopoly price, make monopoly profits, and they share those profits according to the market share. So, uh, again, uh, the profit-maximizing uh, option is when marginal revenue intersects marginal cost. So, over here, marginal revenue intersects marginal cost. You draw a vertical line down to get the profit maximizing quantity and then you extend the vertical line up to get the average cost at this profit maximizing quantity and the price. The difference between both is the abnormal profit. It is that box shaded in gray here. And this is how uh, the, uh, whether it's formal collusion or tacit collusion, the process is the same. They behave as a monopolist and profits are shared according to the market share. Now, there are some conditions that make collusion, whether it's um, formal or informal, there are some conditions that make collusion very difficult to maintain. The first one is that the firms face a very strong incentive to cheat. Okay? They have an incentive to cheat, to secretly offer lower prices to some buyers to capture a bigger market share. Remember at the very beginning I said an oligopolist faces two conflicting objectives. A second thing that might make collusion difficult to maintain is the cost differences between firms. We can't assume that all firms in the oligopoly face the same marginal cost curve. Another thing that might make collusion difficult is firms face different demand curves. We can't also assume that they all have the same average revenue or demand curve. 
the number of firms in the market, the bigger the number of firms in the market, the more difficult it might be um, to collude or cooperate with one another. The smaller the number of firms, the easier it is. There's always the possibility of a price war where one oligopolist cuts, oligopolist cuts their price and then the other responds by undercutting them and it starts a price war. Recessions may also make it very difficult for collusion to be maintained because firms might want to try and lower their prices to capture more market share because the economy is already suffering. Any potential entry into the industry will make the collusion difficult to maintain. And that's why oligopolists try very hard to create those barriers to entry. And if the industry lacks a dominant firm, it might also be difficult to maintain a collusion. It's usually easier when there is a dominant firm that the other firms can sort of um, get their guidance from in terms of pricing and output decisions. These are the conditions that make collusion very difficult to maintain.